Hello and welcome to Minute JavaScript, where I talk about topics quickly and concisely. Today I'll be talking about command line web servers. These are typically web servers used to spin up quickly and serve static content. And of course this video is made possible because of subscribers like you. So I'd like to take a minute to thank Mr. Rapik, Ashish Lin, Vladimir, Smile, Raphael, Stephen, Sweetball, Nicola, Lucas, Zayed, Kishore, Federico, Milad, Faria, Message Akuna, Rohit, Nelson, and Amra. Your subscriptions are what keep my small channel going. So I thank you. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do. So in my application, I have here a gallery app and I have a public folder which consists of a bunch of static contents. So you can see I have an index.html file, I have some JavaScript file, and some CSS as well as images. And I want to be able to easily view this in a web browser before I publish it to the production server. So I have a couple of different options to do this. The first is a package called HTTP server. This can easily be fired up using the command line npx HTTP server, and I usually supply the path too. So to serve up my public directory here, I can just do npx HTTP server and public. Now HTTP server says it's going to be serving on these two addresses. Both of these will work on my local machine. And now I can see that it's serving the index page off of 8081. Now with HTTP server, it does have a couple of options. Uh, you can of course set the port as well as the address that it listens to. And one of the most important options is probably going to be cores. I've had issues developing other applications. When they try and pull content from this server, if cores isn't enabled, um, you can get access exceptions. So whenever I start this up, I'm always sure to start cores whether I need it or not. Another good option is a library called serve. So I'll just type npx serve and I'm going to pass in public also. The nice thing about serve is that it'll copy this address to your clipboard. In my case, it's not going to work because I'm running the uh, WSL version of Ubuntu under Windows. If I was doing this under Ubuntu or Windows or Mac, it would just work. But because I'm using this weird combination, it's just not working on my computer, but it's probably going to work on yours. So again, I'm going to control click on this and you can see here, uh, now I'm serving up uh, this application on this address. For some reason, uh, on my computer, I think it has something to do with WSL. It opens up on 5000 and on 5001. That's why you saw the mismatch, but they both serve the same content. So far, I like both HTTP server as well as serve. I tend to use serve a little bit more um, just because it's easier for me to remember. They both do exactly the same thing and either one is fine. Now, both of these tools will serve up content from your local machine but sometimes you have to make the content available on the internet, either because you have to view it on a different device that's internet connected, or you have to give it to a friend or a coworker to preview. Now this is where a tool called ngrok comes in. Ngrok will take your local content and it'll proxy it through an internet address that's publicly accessible to everybody else. And you can find ngrok just on ngrok.com. Sign up and follow the directions. I am using the free plan, so it'll probably work for you too. And I'm just gonna call ngrok. I'm going to specify HTTP because that's the type of server I want to create. And I'm going to specify the port, which is 5000. And of course, that port is what was just listed over here, 5000. So if I hit enter on here, I can see that it's now created a session online. You can see I am using the free plan. And it's going to give me a couple of different URLs here, HTTP and HTTPS. So if I click this, I can now see my local content on a publicly accessible URL. So I can give this to clients or coworkers, and this really helps when developing applications on my mobile phone, because now I can open this up on the web browser on my phone and continue to develop content on my PC. And I don't have to worry about any cables or connecting between the PC and my phone because it's already a publicly accessible address. And then once you're done, just hit Control C to cancel this. I'm gonna go back in here as well as canceling this application. Thanks for spending your time with me and making it all the way to the end of this video. Of course, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.